I both side before the Kelmali. A quick thought because I think I'd be remiss if I did not share the phrase from the Torah that I always thought of when I saw of Aaron Zetzal, which I think encapsulates everything that we heard just now. Can we find such a person in whom the spirit of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is? Unless we pause, lest we pause for a moment and reflect that this was uttered by Paro in awe of Yosef after he interpreted his dreams and made the proposal for the, for the saving of Mitzrayim. We need to ponder that occasionally, if we're fortunate in life, we come upon people whose towering presence forces us to make such an exclamation. And lest we think that Ruach Elohim is a phrase only appropriate for someone like Paro responding to Yosef, I remind you when HaKadosh Baruch Hu instructed Moshe Rabbeinu to appoint Yahushua as his successor, he says, Kach get Yahushua benun ish asher ruach bo. kazeh ish asher ruach alukim bo. That's what Rav Aaron Zetzal represented to me. I think the Talmud and the Yeshiva, who weren't Zochet to know him necessarily, can perhaps put together. Three very, very quick vignettes that illustrate this point. Remarkable. When I was in Gush, it's called coming up on, I guess, close to 40 years ago. So Rav Aaron lived at that time in Yerushalayim. He used to drive, as was mentioned in the video, I also used to go and hitch a ride on Fridays back to Yerushalayim. Not that I had to go to Yerushalayim, just because I wanted to be in the car. And I took a bus back to the yeshiva. I wanted to hear what he had to say. But the yeshiva, and I heard this from the, one of the uh, administrators, used to pay for his gas, his, his travel costs. And at the end of each month, he submitted the receipts to the office, and they would pay him back for his expenses. And the administrator told me that one month, he came in, he was a bit distraught, he had lost the receipts. And so the person said, okay, so we'll look back at the last month, and whatever with the last month, Mr. Stomach, the distance doesn't change, so it was the same. Lichtenstein pointed out, but there were a couple of less days of yeshiva this month than there were the previous month. So trying to figure out what to do, and Lichtenstein said, well, I can tell you what was on the receipt. And by heart, he recorded what was on the, what the expense ledger was. My purpose is not to tell you that he had the remarkable memory that we all know. But he didn't want to charge the yeshiva more than he was entitled to. Recently, after he took ill, one of the directors of the yeshiva told me that he approached the office and said that now that he's no longer giving the same number of shiurim, and now that he's not really involved in the yeshiva day to day, you have to lower my salary. I can't get the same paycheck. How many of us know many people who do that? Just to conclude, we're now in this period of the Sphira. We mourn the Tamir Akiva. The Gemara tells us that Tamir Akiva perished at this time. However, we understand that. Lichtenstein Zasal was somebody who personified being Noeg covered to everybody. To everybody. Yesterday, a Talmud of his from yet in YU, the late 1960s, told me he was in Lichtenstein's Shir in 1967 at the time of the Six Day War. So there was a big rally in Washington that many, many yeshivas and many people went to. And they had buses from here in Washington Heights to get to Washington. And Lichtenstein went along, and this individual was with him, a Talmud of his, 
And if you can imagine, you know, they were all day in Washington on the way back, they stopped at a rest stop for food and snacks and so on. And this person, when the bus got back to YU, was supposed to walk him to his apartment on Fort George Hill, just a few blocks from here. And everyone got off the bus and people were picked up, they made their way home, and this person was looking, Robinson wasn't there, and he was supposed to walk him back. So he figured he must have gone by himself. But for some reason or other, he decided, let me go take a look on the bus. Maybe he was learning a few extra minutes until everyone else got off the bus. When he got on the bus, he saw of Lichtenstein Zatzal down on his hands and knees, not looking for glasses or a Talmud in the halls of the base medrash, outside the base medrash, but helping the bus driver pick up garbage and waste that was on the floor so that at one o'clock in the morning, whatever time it was, the bus driver wouldn't have to do it himself. And in Ish, Asheruah Halukimbo.